Hey everybody, what's going on? It is still <laughs> the 16th. It's my third video today by 3 o'clock. And, um, okay. The first one was about my little tulip. The second one I just made was about um, my swap.com order that I got in and I, I had to wait you know and all that to wash it and everything and now this one is about me me <laughs> who's sitting here me <laughs> anyway um I had a mentor for a while she was real tough real hard and she said I'm not letting you go until you get your bitch letters um, by the way, I should add right now, this is not a kid's theme today. So, um, if you're 18 and younger, you probably shouldn't watch it if you're like 23 and younger. But, I can't help that. If you want to watch it, watch it. But, it's probably going to be rated R. The language I'm about to be using, in all honesty. Maybe PG-13, but anyway. <laughs> So, I'm um, just warning you, I'm, I'm kind of feisty today. So, I had a mentor, and she said, I, you're not leaving me. I'm not leaving you until you get your bitch letters. And that pretty much meant just grab a pair and, and just stop being so kind of weak and weepy and wimpy. And just, just grab your pair of balls and, and just get your bitch letters and come on, let's, let's get tough here, you know. And, um... She and I parted ways about a year ago. Um, we just, the end of our relationship didn't turn out to be so well. Um, we blamed each other for certain things. We both said certain things that we regretted. Um, we said, you know, we, we just, we were both kind of like the same kind of person. And when you get two of the same kind of people together, not good. <laughs> but anyway, for the longest time, and I have to say that I'm sorry. I really do because that that person yesterday they kept on making all those wimpy um, not that I can't be vulnerable vulnerable and being wimpy are two different things was not me I'm the bitch now you know that's that's what I've been known for not by m many other people I'm not saying that I'm so tough and this and that but but I got wimpy for a long time I got very pathetic very full of depression, full of, oh, poor me, and, <clears throat> and you know, I, I've been under oppression for a very, very, very long time. And I woke up this morning, or God woke me up this morning with the sun shining. And I said, it's going it's to be a beautiful day. And we have this conversation. We haven't had like a really great conversation. Um, I've been so angry at him for a long time. And he said, how are you going to know it's going to be a beautiful day? I said, look at the way the clouds are, you know, and look at the way the sun is, is beaming off the windows over on the other building. And, and you know, so um, so it's going it's to be, be a beautiful day. And all of a sudden I woke up and I was like the Grinch. My heart was two sizes bigger again. And I wasn't so angry and so so just heartbroken and and I, I feel like and then later on I, I watched this couple nothing to do with reborning watch this couple um on on tv and you know I said god I'm coveting again they have a beautiful house and they have cars and they have children and they have each other and and I'm coveting again I've been coveting is thing that I've been doing for the past couple years and I just I hate it because who knows their journey that they had that they took to get where they are now you know you see poof all the stuff is here but what took the journey to get there so that kind of set me off into it I moved again and I said ever since this certain person came back in my life I have backslid a lot I've retreated to the person that I was when I was with them when I was younger, to this very shy, very submissive, very um, pathetic person. 
And uh, I said, God, I, I lost my bitch letters. He said, you did. You know, he's like, I don't like you swearing, but you did. And I got to get him back. And I realized today, I don't know what I'm going to do about it. I've been putting it off and passivity is, is the worst thing that you could ever do. Um, I've been putting it off because this person is a major person in my life. It's not like just a friend or somebody that I know on Facebook or YouTube. It is a major person in my life that's always been in my life. Well, not always. Um, you know, and um, I, I came to the conclusion that I cannot live my life the way that I need to live it with this person in my life. And um, it's a person that I've talked about lots of times before. And we have these big, huge fights, and then we don't talk to each other for weeks. You know, two weeks, three weeks, then one of us calls the other, I'm sorry, this is not, blah, blah, blah. And um, then, you know, then we start again. And then I, I say, okay, we can go out only once every two weeks. Go out once every two weeks. Then we go out and say, you know, I think we're doing good. Let's go out once a week. So then we go out once a week. Then we end up going out like twice a week or maybe three times sometimes. And then that other person gets very comfortable with the way things are going. And that person always comes back around and throws digs, little sideways, like sideways shade remarks and everything. And um, you probably know who I'm already talking about if you've seen any of my videos. And, and I cannot live my life the way I need to live it if this person is in my life because the way the person she's talking to is not here anymore. She's fucking dead and gone. And she came back for a little while. Me. I got very insecure. I got very pathetic again. I got very little, little down, shrunk down again. And I just today, clarity smacked me upside the head and said, I lost my bitch letters again. And bitch letters mean you gotta do certain things. It's not like, you know, like hazing or anything. Um, just, just being a certain way in your life and grabbing your freaking balls and, and, and getting those, you know. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a little hyped up. I have also have just exercised. Uh, I took two laps around today and I'll tell you with my little panometer here. I walked 2,996 steps. It was 1.41 miles, and I lost 80.8 calories. The 80.8, the point eight, is so important. <laughs> but anyway, I, I've shrunk down again t to her level. I said her, didn't I? To her level. And I cannot live the life that I want to live with her in it. I can't do it. I've tried over and over and over and over and over and over again and we fight and we don't talk to each other for weeks and then she gets comfortable and anytime it's, it's usually when she says something to me and we're alone I say something back that's not that's not nice I don't like that you know um anybody out there you know let me not say that because then you're gonna start not liking her and um, that's that's a totally different thing she actually needs your prayers more than anything else. Me too. Um, but I become very humble and meek and pathetic. I become the girl, the little pathetic girl that I was when I was younger. Every time my, my, my mind goes back down to that time, even though I'm older and I'm, I'm getting older, you know, every day, my, my brain goes always back to that time and I become that person again. And I just realized today, thank you, God, not, not me, but God, thank you, that I can't live my life the way I need to live it with her in it because she will always, always bring me back to that place on purpose. And, um, you know, at first for a while I tried to be with my family and I knew that wasn't going to work with my brothers and my sister-in-laws and, and everything. And that was not going to work because to me, to them, I'm so damn afflicted and disabled. You know, that's the way they look at me with their eyes. And that's what they think in their brains about me. 
they don't realize that they themselves are afflicted for thinking of those things. And I shrunk back down again. I backslid. I went back to that person. And I'll, and I, I for a long time, I, I'm like, God, I don't understand what's going on. Because when you backslide, you start to go to a place um, where the enemy's kind of bringing you. And at first, you don't think that anything's wrong. And then all of a sudden, it, can, it goes from like now to four months from now. And you're thinking, well, what happened? And it's so subtly, just so, just so crap. He's so crafty that mother, mm, he, he just so subtly takes you down that road. You know what I mean? And uh, you don't realize it from day to day. And you look up after four months and say, what happened? So I'm now looking up after four months, five months, how many ever months I've been down this road and saying, wow. Have I come away from the person that I was, that I was built up to be? Built up by my mentor, built up by God. And I said, God, I worked so hard to become the person that you want me to be. And now I backslid all the way, all the way back down, you know? And but the good thing is, is that I remember that, that God reminded me today that I backslid. That I rem remember who I used to be. So I know that, that I have a peak to get up to again, that I can obtain again, you know, that it's not going to be all brand, brand new ground. It's going to be, you know, that I'm going to try to get back to that person that I was. And I've been so depressed lately. I've been a different person. I've just the person that you've seen, um, you know, usually I'm, I'm happy, you know, um, I'm usually satisfied with my life and happy. And I just haven't lately, and maybe I haven't because this is not the life that God wants me to live. Clarity. Just a little bit of clarity from God, you know, it just opens up the whole world. And um, I, I feel like I'm on fire again, you know, like, and that's only glory be to God because I, I do it on my own. No. No, but this person brings me down and drags me down day after day after day. And the sly comments, one by one, they don't affect me, but they all add up together. And I just feel like that little piece of crap a girl that she thinks that I am. And it's a shame that somebody so close to you, somebody so close to you, is supposed to love you the most in the whole entire world, hates you the most in the whole entire world, are so jealous and so envious. She can't stand not to be so hateful and spiteful. The most vindictive and spiteful person I have ever met in my whole entire life. I pray I'm back. I pray I'm back. But the only th the only thing that I, I am having a hard time with is in order for me to be who I naturally am, I can't have her in my life. And I can't have people in my life that bring me down constantly. The second guess me, second guess me constantly. And to y'all, I might be afflicted. I might be disabled. But to me, I'm just Karen. You know, and I second guess myself enough. And I, I just put myself down enough that I just don't need anybody else out there doing it for me. Because I'm my worst critic. I really am. And I have tantrums and rants and anxiety attacks lately, like I used to when I was when I was 20 years old. And I can't do. And I didn't have those. I didn't. I they got really low. They got really, um, you know, to the point where I wasn't having those attacks. I would come home and bitch about something that's happened that day, but I wouldn't have a full thrown anxiety attack where, where all the emotions come right from the middle of your gut, you know? And, um, 
so I gotta change again and um, for the better but I can't have people in my life that are against me or people in my life that are dead weight I can't have people in my life that are dead weight and um, and if you're dead weight then I just really don't need you you know I, I need to, you know and it's not just about and if I'm in your life and I'm dead weight cut me cut me out I really do mean that because I wouldn't want to um, prohibit somebody else from from living their life if I'm dead weight to you as well I've been dead weight to a lot of people for a long time by not being my natural self and um, I might look afflicted. My hair is all messed up all the time. I got a big fat face and um, I got nerdy glasses. And and the thing is, that's what everybody sees. The person inside, so different. So different. I don't think of myself as a big fat lady. I don't think of myself, people might see me as that. I don't think of myself as a big fat lady with, with afflictions and disabilities. I think of myself as somebody that is beautiful on the inside and and um, just just God continue to give me clarity, please. Just continue to give me clarity. And who out there honestly loves me? If you know you're dead weight, cut yourself off from me. There are a lot of people out there that I love. Honestly, truly, truly, truly love with all my heart. But just because I love you doesn't mean... that I will accept to be treated in any less way than I expect to be treated. And if you know you don't treat me like that, you know, um, I've not been the best person in the world. God knows that. I've not been the best Christian, I swear, like a sailor every single day. I've not been the best friend. I've not been the best daughter. I've not been the best anything. I've not been the best disciple. But in order to deign to be the best, you have to change. And I know I say speeches all the time, and I have a speech here, and I have a speech there, and I have a speech there, and... People are sick of hearing me having those speeches and not doing anything about it. I know you are. You don't even have to tell me because I know. Because you know who's sick of it more? I am. I'm so sick of having a speech and then two days later doing the exact, op the exact opposite of what I said I was going to do. Um, so yeah. If you're dead weight, cut yourself off from me so I don't have to do it. And if you don't want to be dead weight, and you actually do want to be in my life, not that I'm so wonderful or anything audacious to be in, you know, um, but either just shit or get off the pot. The bitch would say shit or get off the pot. Either you're my friend and you want to be my friend and you're going to do every single thing that you can in your power to be my friend. Or you just love me, but really don't give a crap enough to to do that. Then I would say, cut yourself off from me. So I don't have to do it. I really don't want to cut anybody out. But I can't live my life the way I want to. With, um, with, with dead weight. And, um, yeah. Or, if you feel like I'm dead weight in your life, cut me out. 
I really mean that because I wouldn't want to prohibit anybody from living their life, you know. Um, and I have to say one more thing, and it's really going to piss people off. I feel like if you're going to be my friend and I'm going to be your friend, then let's at least talk to each other once a week. I don't, I don't believe... And I know I'm going to piss people off, and I'm not trying to be hurtful on purpose. But I don't believe in sending those little stupid emojis that, that say, I'm your friend, and if you're my friend too, then you're going to reply back to me. I believe if you're my friend, then you're going to actually speak to me. Instead of send a stupid little uh, icon that says, you know, you're my friend, and if you're really my friend too, you're going to copy and paste this back or whatever. I don't do those. And I could be just out of the loop. I could be just, just really ab abby normal. <laughs> but um, I don't, if you actually really want me in your life, speak to me. And if you don't, then cut me loose. I respect somebody so much more for cutting me loose and being honest than to help them have me hang on the bottom rung as if I'm your last resort that you want to do something with. Some, you know. So it's almost 25 minutes and I've been yapping for a while, but I pray that this day is the start of me, of my comeback. And um, I need to lose weight, for, number one, for my health. But number two, because I've been wearing the same dress shoes for 20 years because my feet are too big to fit into the ones I have. The family that I was born into, we have huge feet. I have size 12 feet, but they're not just 12s. They're like wide, like they're really like, like really wide. And my goal is to not have to wear those shoes for another year of my life. So, I don't know what it's going to take. Um, I'm not going to set a huge goal for myself. I would, I would like to lose, this is what I'd like to lose. I'd like to lose 40 pounds by September, October. I think that is attainable if I stop eating freaking soda bread with butter on it. And I start eating more salads and vegetables and protein. And, um... Yeah. And um, when every single holiday comes around, I don't have to eat all the all the what's out there. I don't have to eat everything Thanksgiving. I don't have to eat everything at Christmas time. I don't have to eat all the damn freaking Cadbury eggs just because it's Easter. Yeah. Um, that's, I can't go one more year wearing the shoes, so I, I need to lose weight. And I need to do it now. Plus, I um, realized that one body part of mine is really hurting when I walk. I can't say what it is because the enemy's out there and he likes to hurt. And, um, but it is, and it's it's something that I realized that I'm, number one, I'm getting older. Number two, I'm getting fatter or um, both and, um, or more fat, if that fatter is not a word. And yeah, so, um, And for those that are my friends and don't realize that I love you so much, I'm sorry. I know I can be very hard to get along with. I was told that a lot in life. And maybe it's something that's true. Maybe it's something that, that's not. And I would, if you need me to be there for you, you need to make me to be accountable. So I can be there for you. Because if I'm ignorant of it, then I just don't know. And let's not keep on using ignorant as a taboo word. You can say ignorant. Ignorant means you just don't know. And I've said this many times. And just for those on YouTube, I'm going to post this on Facebook later. And, um... <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Ow! That hurt. Felt like I had something crawling on me. Um, so yeah. Um, if... if you're my friend, and 
um, you don't think that I love you? Let me know. Let me know that. Let me talk to me. You don't have to sit there and have ice cream and do a, like a big powwow and, you know, sing kumbaya and, and dress in our pajamas. But let me know. So thank you for all for who... My tongue gets ahead of myself. Thank you all for listening and um, for putting up with my crap. But uh, I'm praying from this day forth that the bitch is back because I really missed her. I really missed the bitch. I don't miss that little pathetic thing that I was. So um, we'll just go from there and um, yeah. And also, I love to Skype. Anybody wants to Skype? I'm in. <laughs> love you guys. Bye. And thank you for all those who don't do love me. I love you too. Okay, I just wanted to come back one more time. Take my glasses off so you can see that I really don't have alien eyes. Do I? <laughs> um, there's that. And plus, some people might see... By the way, I look that I, des that I don't deserve nice things. Some people can just see with their eyes and make a quick snap judgment like that. That I don't deserve wonderful things. That I don't deserve to have a beautiful house and a husband and children. And uh, I don't deserve to be treated in a nice, respectful way. Um, I, I just, I feel like that that's, like, my heart is telling me to say this. Because a lot of people just make really quick decisions about me. And about everybody else, too. I mean, I'm not, I'm not any more special than the next person that comes along. Um, but... If you don't think that I deserve wonderful things, then... I can't help that. I can't help that. I can't help your decision about me. Again, I've not been the best friend. I've not been the best person in the world. I've been very... I wouldn't say selfish because I'm a very giving person, but I would say that I've been very self-centered. Um, so yeah. And... Um, Yeah. <laughs> so, if you don't think that I deserve the very best, and you don't want to give the very best, then let's just agree kindly to disagree and go our separate ways anyway. Because I believe that every one of my friends and everybody that I know deserves the best. Because every time I say, you know, again, I'm I'm Christian, I'm saved, and, and maybe I don't act Christian, or maybe things that I, I do, I might not seem like I'm a Christian, but I've been following God for a long time, I backslid for a long time, and the Lord and I have these conversations, and I say, you know, the Lord says, I want you to give something to somebody, and I say, God, but they don't deserve it, and God says to me, how do you know that they don't deserve it? Have you seen their life? Have you seen their walk? Have you seen what they've gone through? You're not the judge to tell them that they deserve it or not anyway. Yeah. So. I'm happy today that I'm changing back. And what I mean by my bitch letters, it doesn't mean that I'm going to be a bitch all the time. It's kind of like an ace in your pocket, you know? It's like when you have to pull the bitch out, then the bitch can come out if she has to. But she doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be, you know, a, t a type A number one bitch all the time, you know? That's just something that if I have to bring it out, then I have to bring it out. That's what has to happen. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to let y'all know that too. <laughs> There's a story. <laughs> My friend and I that I was talking about that we uh, that we parted ways about a year ago. We were in the mall about two years ago, and um, 
<laughs> I've been packing a knife pretty much everywhere I go for about, I would say, three years. And um, you're probably going to say, oh, it's nothing. That's just a little bitty knife, you know, and it's not going to do anything to anybody. But, and it's probably illegal. But that's the one that I pack. It's just a stupid little army knife thing. But it's, it's, it's sharp enough to hurt somebody if need be, you know. And um, so this, this person, I was walking through and this person kind of came around and cut me off, kind of like bumped a shoulder against me like that. And I said, excuse you. He didn't say anything. So I got a little heated. I, I used to get a lot more heated than I do now. And because my flesh just rises so quick, just just that that flesh in me, and um, <laughs> and two stores later, he came and he did it again, and he kind of bumped by me. I said, "I'm packing." I said, "If you want to do this, let's do this. I'm packing. Let's, let's do it again. Like do it again, motherfucker. Do it again." <laughs> just like <laughs> I just because that's how quick my flesh used to come up it used to be like from zero to like a thousand in like 2.2 .2 seconds i'm like motherfucker do it again do it again i'm packing and i know i sounds you know i sound stupid because i'm not i'm not, not a tough guy y'all know that i can't fight i'm not a tough guy but if i gotta cut a bitch i'll cut a bitch you know and um so he, he kind of looked at me and i said yeah uh -huh. what you gonna do about it and uh, he just kind of he i saw his fist like ball out of his sides and he's like, <sighs> like that, and he just he just walked away. I'm glad because I wouldn't have to have to get out my knife. But you know, I'm, I it see, and it's not just because I got my bitch letters. I have flesh just like everybody else's flesh, and I get hot just like everybody else get hot. And if you wrong me, then then the, the, I mean I'm, I'm gonna not just look at you crossway, you know, cross-eyed. I'm I'm gonna just like. That flush is going to go bam and hit back down. So, um, <laughs> I just thought that I'd uh, say that little story. Put my nerdy glasses back on. And, um, yeah, the nerdy glasses make that story so effective, don't they? I know that you, I know you love them. <laughs> so, I'll talk to you later, guys. And, uh, yeah, true story. True story. So, talk to you soon. Bye.